I was going to leave this cherry tree because I was going to put the workshop over there, but I changed my mind a bit. I'm going to take this cherry and I'm going to put the workshop right here, kind of kitty corner to the camp yard, and then put the greenhouse right from here forward. The greenhouse will be right in the sun, be in the sun about 9.30 in the morning, and then the remainder of the day going to work out really good. This is all going to be gardens. <laughs> took a lot of trees down, huh? We just took that small pine down, but I got some big ones to take down. But this is all going to be gardens here. This slopes upward well, about where the log splitter is. We're going to dig down. We're going to pull that dirt this way. Build a stone retaining wall over there. I still have these pines here to take down. I only cleared as far as these two big pines. I really like the look of them. They frame the yard really nicely. And the chicken coop will go on either side, either that side or that side. And I have an old glass door that I will put on the south side and put a roost behind it. That way the hens can all line up on that roost and enjoy the sunshine on a winter day. It's coming into it now, man. I'm really excited. Really excited about it. Quite often, whenever I've talked about using a wood-burning kitchen stove, I had a lot of people comment saying that when they were younger, maybe they were growing up with one of those old stoves that they got so sick of splitting up their firewood into little pieces. Well, we've been using a wood-burning kitchen stove, the antique models, my entire life. And never once did we take a log this size and split it up into something this size. I think if I would have done that, my dad would have hit me over the head with it. <laughs> what we always used is the branches, okay? We never left this stuff out in the woods to rot. And we never split up a big chunk of wood into little pieces. Now, I can understand you doing that if you don't harvest your own firewood. You order cordwood, it gets delivered. Well, then you got to work with what you have. But if you're going out in the woods and cutting your own trees down, I don't see the sense in leaving all the branch stock out there to rot and then cutting up all of your, or should I say, splitting up all of your big wood into little wood. Just really never made much sense to me. Here, right up until we moved into Kitchen Queen 380, we were using an antique Glenwood that has been cooking the meals here. My longer than I've been on this earth. And at the homestead, before we put the kitchen queen in over there, we were using an old Crawford. And all I did was cut up the branches, about three inches and under. Trying to cut this stuff with a chainsaw is monotonous and can be quite dangerous sometimes too. These are irregular shaped and they flip and fly all over the place. I use a chop saw. I just bring it over to my pile of branches, set it up, bang right through it. When I'm using the antique stove, I cut them shorter. The shorter ones fit into the, the ring of the firebox much easier. But I still, even though we have a big firebox, I still burn this stuff up. I don't leave it in the woods. And it also makes great wood for the campfire, stuff like that. I never leave it out in the woods to rot. But if you're going to use a chop saw, don't use your good chop saw that you use for carpentry work. Don't do it, okay? Because these are a regular shape. Sometimes you're cutting through them and they'll buck. And they buck fast and they buck hard and they will break your chop saw, okay? I'm never going to use my $600 DeWalt to cut this stuff. Probably 10 years ago, I bought one of the cheap Ryobis for like $99 or something. And that happened. One of those bucked. It broke it right in two pieces. 
So then I started looking at yard sales or Craigslist or something like that. If you're going to use a chop saw, get one of the old ones, something 25, 30 years old. They're big, they're heavy, they're solid steel or cast iron. Those are the ones to use. I just use one of the old ones that are fixed position. Works out fantastic. Very, very small investment. Yeah, the big wood stays big, the branches get utilized. That's the way to do it. I'll show you what I got going on over here. And here, I got all the branch stock, you know, about inch and a half and up. I got some, a three inch, four inch, whole bunch of it. Over here, I've got it all cut up, stove length. Yep, I just set up my table right here the chop saw cut it right up real quick see the chop saw even handles about four inch yep I'm gonna utilize everything never leave it in the woods to rot that stuff throws a lot of heat too man yes sir. hey a couple weeks back I was showing you my Foxfire book that I got at the dump when I say Foxfire book, I mean that singularly. <laughs> but I've got some really, really wonderful subscribers out there. I've sent along some really cool things. They leave some wonderful comments. One of these days we'll have a meet and greet and I get to meet some of you folks. But anyway, so I have my Foxfire book. Then... I got Foxfire too, huh? <laughs> yeah, but not only that, I got Foxfire 3, <laughs> Foxfire 4, Foxfire 5, Foxfire 6, 7, 8, 9, and Foxfire 10. What a treasure. A good friend Gene sent me his collection. I can't thank you enough for your generosity. When winter rolls around and life slows down again, I'm really going to enjoy reading these. Um, to have a collection of these, this is a world of knowledge, man. This is incredible. I just wanted to share that with everyone and say thanks again, Gene. I really, really appreciate this. <laughs> well, a lot of questions have come in this week. I'm only going to answer a few because some of the answers are kind of more involved. Lots of people write they love the new format. Lots of people love the Q&As but not everyone. And they write and tell me to. <laughs> so I put all the Q&A sections at the end of these vlogs. That way, if you don't have any interest in it, when the Q&A starts, you can X out and you won't miss any more of the video. My content has changed a bit over the last couple of years because our lives have changed, okay? we went from our normal life all set up there in New York to selling out, moving here, and just been working on creating a new life here. And right now that I bought that land, all we've been doing is cutting trees, dragging brush, cutting up firewood, splitting up firewood, stacking up firewood, every chance that we can, okay? Haven't done any hunting videos because hunting season's not open. Haven't done any Dutch oven cooking because at the end of the day, I am exhausted and I just want to eat, not hang around trying to cook something slow in a Dutch oven. But we're making progress and we'll get our life back to normal. And when life gets back to normal, my content will get back to normal. So right now, what I am doing 
as I am just titling all my videos with the same type of thumbnail as vlog number one, number two, number three, number four, and the content in those will be random bits and pieces of this and that, ending with these Q&As, because a lot of people like these Q&As, they have a lot of questions. So that's the way it is for now. All right. How do you make your branch handles for your cabinets? I get asked that a lot. And my answer is the same. I don't make them. Mother Nature makes them, and I just cut them to fit and screw them on. <laughs> That's it. Are you still selling your art? Now, there's a lot of questions about my art. Okay, people have gone to the old videos and saw the link to the art, and now it's not there. Let me just kind of wrap all this stuff up. All right. Right now, I'm not selling my art. I've taken my website down. I'm just too busy for everything. I don't have a place to store my art, my shrink wrap machine, all of that stuff, all that inventory. I don't have room for it right now. But in the future, I will, okay? Um, some of the other questions with that was, did you go to school to learn how to draw? Did you work for any company or business as an artist? As a graphic artist, why did you quit? So on and so forth. Okay, I never went to school for art. When I was, I think, in third or fourth grade, art was one of the subjects, art, music, and there was other subjects that were part of our daily lessons, but that didn't go well. <laughs> uh, I've exper experimented with just about all the different mediums always gravitated back to pencil and paper. I've always liked the simplicity of working with just pencil and paper. I got very obsessed with detail, almost to the point of insanity. Like the drawing I did of the old Model A with the raccoons in the barns, that drawing took me 254 hours from start to finish. It was very involved. Um, I did a lot of traveling around, setting up a booth, selling at various shows. I had my own gallery, and I had products in 181 gift shops at that time. That was a really cool time of my life, okay? I was an illustrator for Vermont Outdoors magazine. I didn't work as an employee. I was a graphic artist, and I did a lot of freelancing with different companies and businesses doing logos and stuff like that. I quit basically because I just lost interest in it. I chased that dream, climbed the ladder, got to where I wanted to be, and moved on to something else. So a lot of people ask me um, if I foresee the same thing happening with videos. Well, I don't really know. I really I like making videos. One thing I do like about it is I can work on a video and I put it out and right away I have exposure throughout the world where when I sold my art I would do a drawing and then it took forever to get that out there. So making videos it's a new medium I have a lot of fun doing it but I'm, I'm YouTube is not the same as before there's all kinds of hassles demonetization you hear it from other channels like the videos I have on how to process your own deer, all the hours I put into making that video to help people to save money, so how they to, so they can learn how to process their own meat. De YouTube demonetized them. They said it's not suitable for advertising, but yet they still run ads on my videos, but I don't get paid for them. So it's a big hassle. So the future of YouTube with me and YouTube. I don't know. I'll just leave it at that. But I really enjoy um, posting on Patreon. The crowd there, it's a small group of people, friendly atmosphere, and I really enjoy it. So, but who knows? Who knows what the future holds? So that's all I'm going to answer today. The sun is finally shining, and I'm going to get back outside and back to work. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. All the best to you, and God bless. 
Frankie the boss out walking in the woods Living life happy and free Tracks in the snow everywhere they go There's a pokey way up in that tree A beaver built a pond where they have some fun Taking life a day at a time Best friends until the end Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss Frankie and the boss